When it comes to Fortnite, the first gamer that comes to mind is usually Ninja. We're talking about a player with over 30,000 career solo eliminations to his name. Just by watching a few games, you'll learn so many tips and tricks from him that might turn you into Fortnite's next superstar. Before we begin, hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with the gamer and ring that bell to become a part of our notification squad so you never miss a video. Be aggressive. When you watch Ninja, one of the first things you notice is how ruthless and aggressive he is. It seemingly doesn't matter if he's outnumbered 4 to 1, he'll be so aggressive that it catches the other team by surprise, and with his ridiculous skill takes them out in a matter of seconds. Of course, he strikes when the time is right, but the thing is, he always strikes. He doesn't let one good opportunity pass without taking advantage of it. This takes a lot of practice and experience to develop, but over time, once you're confident enough with your accuracy, you could be just as aggressive as Ninja. In a game of solo, the strategy is a bit different. If you know where someone is, just rush them. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Quickness and aggression can catch anyone by surprise. In duos or squads, you have much more to worry about. Players don't get eliminated instantly, and there's typically two to four people you'll have to kill at one time. Take out those you have a clear shot on, build to prepare for when the rest of the squad comes, and take care of business. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes it won't. But you'll never develop skills like Ninja if you don't try. Worst case scenario, you die and try again. Become a Master Builder Let's face it, you could have the best loot and be the most accurate shooter in Fortnite, but if you can't build, you won't win. Well, maybe you'll win here and there, but you'll find it difficult to maintain success and accumulate thousands of wins in your career. All the best players are incredibly skilled at building. They could build a three-story, one-by-one tower in around three seconds flat, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's very important to be able to build these towers as quick as possible if you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best. Now, many Fortnite gamers believe Myth is a better builder than Ninja, but that's no disrespect to Ninja since he's more than capable himself. As you may already know, there are some good builds and some rather reckless ones. It's important to cover yourself up unless you're building up to an enemy or rushing them. If not, you may be exposed from the sides or behind, making you an easy target. You also have to be aggressive when building and make sure you get the height advantage on your opponent. We see Ninja do this countless times and it always works out because you have a better shooting angle on your opponent. Fast tower builds and quick thinking are necessary to become a master builder. Use the best weapons. There are weekly updates in Fortnite, so things are constantly changing. Not every update comes with a weapon change, but it's important to keep up with the changes and understand how the Fortnite meta is evolving over the weeks. For example, Double Pump was all the rage until the Pump and Tack combo. Then it went back to Double Pump before going to the Pump and SMG combo we see Ninja use so much. This is due to buffs and nerfs patched into the game by Epic Games to maintain weapon balance. Ninja pays attention to the changes, and when the SMG got buffed, he figured it would be lethal with the pump since shotgun shot times were recently slowed down with a nerf. And he was right. Along with keeping up with the meta, it's important to know which weapons are the best and what they excel at. Ninja mostly uses burst assault rifles because of their accuracy at long range. And we see him use auto ARs when he feels like he'll mostly be engaging in medium range battles. He also prefers the heavy shotgun over the pump and will settle for a tactical shotgun when neither are available. Ninja also loves the hunting rifle because it's just as effective as a bolt-action sniper if you're accurate with it. Using the right weapons is so important. Consistent Weapon Slotting It's one thing to know all the best weapons and use them appropriately, but it's another thing to set the weapons up in your inventory in a way that's consistent. When you pick up a weapon, it's automatically slotted in one of your free inventory slots. Or if your inventory is full, it'll replace the item you're currently holding. But if you go into your bag, you could actually move the weapons around in an order that you're used to. If you've ever watched Ninja, you've definitely noticed how he likes to organize his inventory. From left to right, he prefers close-range weapons like shotguns and SMGs, then long-range and mid-range weapons like snipers, hunting rifles, and assault rifles. And last but not least, meds. Now, he plays on PC, so everything is set to a specific key. But the premise is the same on console. He slots his weapons in a way that's comfortable to him he knows what button to press to bring up each weapon. On console, you have to cycle through all the weapons, so it's best to organize them in a way that you like. For example, from left to right, our ideal inventory would be an AR, a shotgun, an SMG, a bolt-action sniper, and mini shields. It's all about sorting it the way you want and keeping it consistent. Carry mini shields. 
Mini shields are a Fortnite player's best friend, unless you find them right after drinking a half shield. While this happens so much it's ridiculously frustrating, we still love those mini shields. If you pay attention to the meds Ninja uses, you'll know this guy absolutely loves his mini shields and we love them just as much. What would you rather carry at full health and full shield? A med kit or two mini shields? If you answered med kit, you're a complete new because the answer is definitely two mini shields. Think about it for a second. When you get hit by a weapon or explosive, it's your shield bar that goes down before your health bar. By constantly popping minis every time you take damage, your health bar will remain untouched. Now of course, half shields can do this job as well, but they're rarer and take a whole 5 seconds to drink, while two minis take a combined 4 seconds to drink. That one second gap could mean life or death in a high intensity gunfight. It could make all the difference. Now, when Ninja can't get his hands on a mini shield, he'll settle for a half shield, med kit, or bandages. But he's pretty much obsessed with the minis. In other words, stack minis unless you haven't found any of them. Harvest tons of materials. You've probably seen this tip in a million Fortnite tips and tricks videos by now, but it's constantly mentioned for a reason. It's incredibly important. In Fortnite, almost everything is breakable. This is a great thing since it means you could easily harvest plenty of materials, except for Redditor the Derpy Troller who accidentally broke Chappadoodle's tombstone that Epic Games put in to remember Muzelk's failed rescue mission. The reason it's so important is because when you engage in a gunfight, your natural instinct should be to build. If you get into a drawn out building fight, the loser will usually be the one who ran out of materials. So it's tremendously important to make sure you have plenty of them. When Ninja enters a building, the first thing he does is loot the place. He's constantly swinging his harvesting tool around to get some materials. It may not seem like much to destroy chairs, beds, and nightstands in a house, but the materials add up in the end. Also, when harvesting materials from tall trees, make sure the health of the tree is left at 50 so it doesn't break apart and make you an easy target. There's a lot to think about. Don't be scared of the storm. The storm is a very scary place. Everything's dark, it's purple, and it's claimed the lives of millions of Fortnite players around the world. It's a place you normally don't want to step foot in even for a second, but you shouldn't avoid it completely. You see, the storm gets progressively more powerful each time the circle shrinks, but the first two storms in particular are very weak. The first storm only deals 1 damage per second even when it settles, and the second storm deals 1 damage per second as well, but 2 damage per second once it's settled. This means that if you have full health, you'll be able to survive inside of the first two storms for around 50 to 100 seconds. That's a hell of a long time. Now we're not telling you to pitch a tent and camp in the storm, but don't shy away from engaging in some gunfights when caught inside of the first two storms. Of course, it's smart to have a medkit handy so you could regain all your health if you plan to go into the storm, because it'll go for your health right away, not your shield. Ninja tends to avoid the storm completely, but he's not scared to target people in the storm or run in to collect their loot. Aim for low points when landing. Have you ever landed somewhere in Fortnite and gone, how the hell did he get here first? We're sure you have, and if you haven't learned it already from Ninja's videos, we'll let you in on a pro tip. Fortnite players often forget about how crucial it is to get a good landing. It's actually critical to your success in the Battle Royale. If you get a better landing, you'll be the one who gets the golden scar on the ground, not the guy who landed two seconds later. It has a monumental impact on whether you win or lose. Aiming for the low points of the map is the best way to get the perfect drop. For example, if Ninja wanted to land at Tilted Towers, he would probably land near the southwest corner of Loot Lake and use his glider to get a great landing. For locations on the coast like Paradise Palms or Snobby Shores, drop above the ocean and once your player activates the glider, head to your location. It's simple enough, if you could fall directly downwards onto a low point of the map, you got yourself the perfect drop. Anticipate Rotation Spots Whether or not you win the game could often be determined before the game even starts. No, we're not saying Fortnite is rigged, we're just saying that if you pay more attention to what's going on before you land, it'll increase your chances of winning the game. What's important to remember is the route the battle bus took, when people are jumping out of the bus, and the location of the first circle. It's a lot to remember, but it quickly becomes second nature. Now this is important to note if you want to win the game, not if you want to just get kills. You land at Tilted Towers for those. So let's say the bus is going directly over Tilted Towers in Paradise Palms. 
In this case, those locations would be areas to avoid since players love to land in areas directly underneath the battle bus. Let's also say you landed at Salty Springs and the first circle is in the northeast where Wailing Woods and Lonely Lodge are. This means that all those players who landed at Tilted in Paradise will have to rotate towards the circle. The fact that you landed at Salty means Tomato, Retail, and Lonely are all war zones and you'll have to move early if you want to avoid that mess. Predicting rotations like Ninja is key to winning in Fortnite. Know the best landing spots. With so many landing spots to choose from, it could get very difficult to learn which ones are the best. Ninja is such a good player that he could land anywhere and win, but for the average player, landing at Tilted Towers will have you taking the L in no time. If surviving and winning the game is your goal as opposed to just getting kills, then you'll want to land on the outskirts of the map. Junk Junction, Haunted Hills, Snobby Shores, Lucky Landing. These are some of the best landing spots because there's a lot of loot and much less players than Tilted Towers, Retail Row, or Pleasant Park. Your odds of winning are much higher on the outskirts, and so are Ninja's. If Ninja lands at any outskirt, he's most likely to win the game since there aren't many players to challenge him, and he could loot up with no pressure before moving on. When he lands at Tilted, he has a good chance of winning the game, if he manages to get out of there alive. Tens of players could land at Tilted in one game, so even a player of Ninja's caliber might have a hard time getting out of there. Tilted is a great landing spot to hone your shooting skills, but not if you actually want to win the game. Wow, well there you have it. Do you think you have what it takes to beat Ninja? Are there any tips we may have missed? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, if you haven't already, subscribe to The Gamer to keep up to date with all things gaming. Thanks for watching.